have a sister at home she is studying fourth year in college she is having zoom meetings and google meet classrooms so i know what you guys tend to do you just turn it on and keep doing something else but then now i want a very active class okay i am not going to bore you with uh, article numbers and all the details it's going to be a just a very uh, brief brief talk on uh, the constitution of india okay so i want the students to ask questions in between and answer to my questions okay i want it to be a participative session you can unmute and talk or you can use the chat box and uh, send your replies okay so before delving into the constitution of india i want to know if you guys are all aware of what is happening around you students like do you watch the news or get get the dose from social media memes and all that please reply chat box or just talk to me unmute and please talk to me do you watch the news do you know what's happening around you do you know the system around you it's just a yeah, simple yes or no question please reply okay so darshini has replied yes thank you prashya shraddha sarada yes thank you for replying because it'll be really monotonous just looking at the screen and talking so good thank you so much okay so you all know what's happening around you so this session will not be boring for you and uh, learning constitution will be interesting for you and i'll tell you why okay so generally why do we have to know the law why is it important you uh, anybody can say like you can unmute and say why do you think it's important to know the basic laws basic laws anybody like you can unmute and talk to safeguard ourselves to safeguard ourselves very very good thank you to safeguard ourselves yes so from very simple instances okay uh, everybody like you will be traveling in a two wheeler or car okay there will be many times where, where you're being harassed by the cops okay they can seize your uh, vehicle or they just snatch away your key and you know that it's not at all uh, they don't have any rights to snatch your key so when you know uh, when you know your basic rights you can safeguard yourself okay you can uh, when you start talking to them if someone's asking a bribe to you if the traffic constable or somebody is asking for a bribe you tell them you tell them to give the chalan to give you the notice and all that okay so that way you can and once you start talking to them like this that you know the rights and then you can tell them okay i'll go to the corruption anti corruption bureau and you can like you know i'll file a complaint then they will stop harassing you they will not you know tell you they will not take away your key or threaten you with uh, any consequences so from that simple uh, day to day instance to huge thing knowing your rights is very very important okay okay in that knowing your basic rights is important okay so the constitution of india is the supreme law of the land okay all other rights that we have today okay all other rights like the traffic motor vehicle rules to all other rights we have today they all originate from the constitution of india that is the basic right you have okay it is the supreme law of the land and uh, so why what is the constitution of india can someone say that what is it i'm going to wait for a reply what is the constitution of india anybody it is a basic structure of it is the basic structure of a government okay of a country uh, of a country as such of a country as such yeah it gives the basic framework okay the constitution as such it is just a document or it is a book you can say okay 
so that book when was it written and who drafted the constitution the law of the land yes who drafted the constitution dr b r ambedkar dr b r ambedkar very good so when we got our independence in 1947 the british left behind a huge land for us to govern right so that time we had many committees okay so sardar vallabhai patel took up the task of bringing all the states together and dr b r ambedkar was head of the drafting committee so along with eight other members he drafted the constitution of india okay now um, you are all civil engineers right like you are studying to become civil engineers so to construct to build a house what do you need like most basically what do you need you need a plan right do you need a plan or not or to do anything for that matter don't you need a plan is somebody talking yes 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 so you need a plan to uh, do anything so when the british left us we had a huge country okay so we needed a plan to develop that country to build that country okay build it into the nation that we aspire to still become okay so when the british left us our poverty rate was 70% okay 70% uh, of indians were below the poverty line and uh, the literacy rate was just 18% okay now it's around 74% so probably if you were born in 1947 you will not be literate simply put only like some elite classes that is uh, how much can i say only like uh, 82% eight, 82% didn't know how to study how to read or write okay now from that situation you had to build it into a nation okay into a developed nation we are still in that uh, race we are still a developing country and we aspire to become a developed country okay so for this we needed a plan okay so that plan was put into put in through the constitution the constitution can be an analogy to the plan okay how to govern the country and uh, to build a for to build a house you need some elements you need what all do you need to build a house apart from the so you have the plan so now you need the structural elements okay you need cement sand okay steel and all that so to govern the country to run a country you need some things okay so first what do you need first you need land okay so what is the territory what is our territory what is india what does it constitute okay so what is the country is first thing and then to call something a country you need land and then what do you need you need people right how do you call yourselves indians what what gives you that right you have something called citizenship right so there's something called you have citizenship and then you need rights and then you have some duties and then you have some major framework to govern you what is that framework that's around us that's governing us what do you think are the elements there are basically three elements okay the executive the legislature and the judiciary. judiciary these three elements yes you have these three elements very good so uh, and then you have these three elements and apart from that do you think there's any governing uh, anything governing us any other institution any other institution that is uh, there to serve us to govern us apart from the basic exec okay they all they all come under that okay parties you have okay you have parties you have municipal you have municipalities and panchayats okay something at the levels at center and state and also at the lower levels you have something okay so now uh, shall we so these are the basic things okay all these things are given in the constitution that's all okay now your entire class will be on this you will have a course on this right you going to have a course on this so all these things that i said will be uh, dealt will be taken in much more detail in your class that's all 
and that only is the constitution okay there's nothing much this constitution is nothing new okay whatever you study in civil engineering every year you have a new chapter and it's all new but then constitution is something that that is that you're enjoying something that's around you okay it's everything that you already know okay now uh, let's go into the constitution like everything a little bit in detail i'll tell you what the structure is okay so basically one second okay so uh, basically the constitution has 465 articles okay 465 and it has uh, so that 465 articles is divided into 25 parts okay like part 1 2 3 up to 25 and there are 12 schedules okay so now um, there are 25 parts but there are only a few parts that are very important okay the first starting few parts are very important okay so i'll go into that but i'll not go into the details right okay so the first part of the constitution is uh, union and its territory uh one second sorry okay are you guys interested is everybody interested is everybody listening yes ma'am i like a yes like thank you for the one who said it yes. okay yes ma'am okay very good okay so so far what did we see knowing our rights is very important okay only then we can enjoy to the fullest and also protect ourselves from exploitation right okay so that is why we are going to study or we are going to know the constitution okay once you know the constitution then you will get an interest to know more about other laws other laws meaning so now every day the motor vehicles act you go out okay you face the police uh, police traffic police so you can protect yourself from harassment there and then there are so many acts like domestic violence cyber uh, for all the cyber crime that's happening so everything you need to know the law to protect yourself okay so now going back to the constitution how many articles were there and divided into 25 parts the first part is union and its territory okay it's called union and its territory in that the very first article like i said to build a nation first you need what do you need first you first need the territory you first need the land okay so that is what is being given to us in the constitution okay you are being given the territory of india they are defining what india is so they're telling india that is bharat is a union of states okay all the states coming together form india okay um okay so before independence and all we were divided into a lot of um, british provinces were there but there were also a lot of princely states right back then we had all empires right you had the mohal empire and then you had cholas cheras pandyas but then the, when the british came they like you know they defeated the mughals the mughals like you know they were rooted out but then you had some other empires mysore hyderabad and all were still there okay at the time of independence there were around 500 or like 550 princely states 550 and hyderabad was one of uh, was the biggest princely state at that time okay so they had to bring all that together mm. and all this put together the princely states and then the british territory everything put together it became union of india okay so under that they give some other provision they give some other provisions like uh, what do i say how to okay recently when the how many new how many states are there totally how many states are there in india reply 29 29 okay okay very good 29 so now uh, very good okay so now uh, they change union territory of uh, jammu and kashmir was a state correct jammu and kashmir was yes, a state but then yes, what did they do to jammu and kashmir then they bifurc they bifurcated it okay they split it into two parts right and they made one part a union territory and the other is still remains a state correct so what what uh, how can they do it what rights do they have to do it 
for anybody to do something for anybody to do anything they need to okay for our college principal to do something he has certain rights whatever he can do you can't do okay so there is some authority some right they have okay so like that our constitution is giving the right our constitution is giving the right for our legislators to do this change okay internally you can readjust okay do you remember andhra pradesh was one state but then then it got bifurcated to telangana and andhra pradesh inno munadi like you go forward in 1950s and all madras state was a very big state it was a very very big state okay it included andhra pradesh so from madras state the telugu people uh, telugus they wanted a state of their own they fought and then they got a separate state so like this india itself uh, had like got rearranged like several times okay so uh, who is giving them the power to do this is the constitution of india okay so the first part talks about india okay how you can readjust how you can take new territory okay or how you can do internal readjustment all that is said in that okay so second part is uh, citizenship okay do you all know about uh, uh, rohingya Mus okay tell about uh, talk about some refugees that you know of where all is refugee crisis happening reply or like speak up refugee crisis where all is it happening who are the refugees that you know of pakistan very good there are refugees coming from pakistan yes sri lanka elam tamil elam refugees they are in india rohingya from bangladesh rohingya rohingya muslims they are from uh, myanmar and they are migrating to bangladesh okay and then uh, in the middle east there are a lot of countries syria and all that and then they are going to so many other countries okay so uh, all these people are refugees okay if they go to another country how do you think they will be treated i'll first i'll tell you a small story when uh, okay in 2018 i think i worked as a part time self defense trainer with uh, with an ngo okay the ngo is called uh, organization for tamil elam it is a big uh, it is a big ngo it is run by tamil elam refugees okay so uh, their agenda is that they have been doing social work for the cause of refugees for all the tamil elam refugees that are here in tamil nadu they have been doing a lot of social work okay and now as a, as a gratitude as a gift or, or as out of gratitude they have these courses okay uh, they had the self defense course and they had many other courses all they have corporate sponsorship and everything uh, for, under that like you they have tie ups with government schools they go there and teach them various life skills okay one such program was the self defense training i was a part of it and uh, see the thing is it is being conducted by or who is doing it is elam refugees okay as a thank you to the tamil nadu people now it is our time let us give you something abdina they are saying okay they were treated well tamil elam refugees when they came to india our uh, chief minister that time and uh, they were all treated really well they were given camps and then uh, people were able to study in india they were able to graduate and all that so that was the first time i came uh, face to face i was able to have contact or talk to a refugee so that is when you know their rights are limited they have to go back to another country they have to go back to their own country and here whatever it is they are do you think they'll have the same uh, rights or those feelings as us ltt is a, is an organization for liberation these are just people who migrated okay sri lankan tamil people who migrated okay so uh, imagine the plight of those people you have so many rights they can't vote okay and uh, they can't you know freely settle and all. they have lot of limitations okay and you think of rohingya muslims you think of um, there's a book have have any of you all read the book called exit west it's a book the book is called exit west okay 
so that book talks about um, it is a very uh, you know a very normal book but then the plot is how two refugees escape from a middle east country and then they go to a different country and how they the difficulties they face you know how they have to live in camps and if they try to seek employment what do you think will happen imagine like large number of people coming to a place you know what's happening assam in assam right what are assam assam people fighting for can somebody speak up from the chinese border uh, conflict no i'm not talking about the chinese border conflict in assam in assam assam people don't want outsiders to come to their place right the caa protest happened right how many of you all know caa citizen citizenship amendment act india yeah recently like few months back caa act was coming and there was huge uh, protest everywhere around in like everywhere in india india said we were giving citizenship to some religious minorities like to hindus christians buddhists parsis sikhs except muslims we are giving citizenship to other religious people from countries of pakistan afghanistan bangladesh and all they said okay are you aware of all that how many of you all are aware of that yes ma'am yes ma'am okay okay so you guys yes, are aware okay so what are these people fighting for citizenship and some people like people are ready to come to india okay see what i am trying to put forward here is that only when you know the problems around citizenship will you be able to appreciate what you already have see for you your citizenship is secure okay there are people in the borders who are having a very bad lifestyle okay people living in refugee camps how how do you think they go to schools how do you think they go to colleges or have good hospitals what is their life there okay so please uh, why i am telling all this is this okay i tend to go off topic so like you know tell me to stop if i'm going too off topic okay so now we talk about citizenship okay our constitution of india is giving us citizenship okay so there are many people who don't have citizenship or at least they're being persecuted by their countries they're coming as refugees coming and asking for citizenship okay so you have to appreciate what you have and have empathy for those who are having trouble with respect to that okay or are seeking help okay so we should be that's what i'm trying to say okay so part 2 of the constitution talks about citizenship okay and in our constitution they have given uh, citizenship only with respect to that 1945 to 1950 periods okay see you know what happened during 1947 there was there was so much violence in the country so much violence okay pakistan wanted to be a muslim state right pakistan is a muslim state right yes so pakistan is a muslim state and uh, so p- suddenly there's so much communal violence okay there are a lot of people in india who are all forcing muslim people some muslim people want to settle in india but then the hindu people here are all very angry and then they want to go kill those muslim people okay and the hindu people in pakistan area they were persecuted there okay so there was so much bloodshed it was a blood bath in 1947 okay a huge number of uh, hindus from pakistan region came to india and large number of muslims in the indian territory went to pakistan okay so there were many cut off dates okay up to this date you will be uh, if you come within this state you will be indian and the mala nariya irukku so that all that all those points is given in the indian constitution and or article number two they say after this after 1950 and all that whatever pertains to constitution let the legislature take care of let the parliament take care of okay so after this any regarding to constitution or any changing anything is changing the parliament will pass an act so you have the citizenship act of india so that act only which was pa- that act was initially passed in 1955 okay so that was uh, amended recently so that was why there was a lot of uh, protest all over india okay any doubts up to this no ma'am okay 
will there be a world war 3 could be and this time if it comes it will be a nuclear warfare and uh, there won't be anybody remaining so it's better it does not occur okay so now do you have an idea about citizenship do you know how important citizenship is and okay so what yes, is the difference if you are a citizen and if you are not a citizen what what privileges do you get now a foreign coming and uh, working in india let's say even he will have he or she will have lots of rights but some rights are very exclusive for example i said no i went to that um, organization i was working there i came I, i i made friends with them they are like my friends now so they are all refugees okay they do not have indian citizenship but they are living in india they have been living for like so, for a lot of years now okay so what is the difference between uh, uh, that person and me they don't have the right to vote right okay? to vote you have to. yes very good very good so they don't have voting rights okay only a citizen has voting rights and only a citizen can hold constitutional offices okay so tomorrow you want to run for any constitutional office let's say you have to be a citizen of india okay and also you are applying for uh, tnpsc upsc next year like you know once you pass out of college i know a large uh, big chunk is definitely going to apply for services okay so you say you are a sri lankan citizen no you are not going to you cannot apply for indian civil services right yes so for all these reasons citizenship is very important and uh, problems with the citizenship can you know can create so much turmoil and uh, their lives are very unsettled they really suffer a lot okay so please appreciate what you have and our indian constitution gives us the citizenship okay so next after citizenship uh, the constitution talks about fundamental rights okay so we all know a lot of uh, indo china conflict i'm just reading the messages indo china conflict will india support us will india support us on what for what okay i'll go back to fundamental rights and we'll come back to this okay fundamental rights you will uh, everybody would have studied in civics in school that you have uh, seven fundamental rights but now it's, it's actually six fundamental rights um, you have right to equality right against exploitation um, you know this right somebody else can say this all the fundamental rights the basic headings right of freedom cultural and educational cultural and educational rights very good next right to information uh, right to property right to property yes right to property was a fundamental right okay now they took it off it is no more a fundamental right it is a right okay it is a legal right but it is not a fundamental right okay right to so, information right to information is not implicit okay yeah. under one of the fundamental rights it will all be implicit implicit okay what else right to religious freedom okay right against think, exploitation right against exploitation very good right against exploitation okay so these are the basic headings and then right to constitutional remedies did anybody tell that right to education okay right to education is a fundamental right, right to equality equality yes okay now i'll give a very simple elaboration on all these uh, rights okay so now these are all gross uh, big headings under that you have many small, small many rights okay so first let's take right to equality okay so in the right to equality what do they say what does it uh, what are they trying to say what are they giving to you what right are they giving generally if you translate it is like treating everybody equally okay so but what are they trying to say all are equal before law there is no discrimination very good okay all are equal before law okay that itself is a very very important uh, doctrine okay equality before law okay uh, so what do they mean by that india has a very uh, what to say uh, hierarchical system you know the caste punishments right uh, we had a very rigid caste system and uh, when a higher caste person commits a crime okay they won't get punished uh, very severely it will all be very simple right if it's a lower caste person committing the crime 
the punishment will be very severe very very severe and it will be very brutal okay and uh, we lived in a play of like there were kings and uh, nobles and okay very hierarchical system so now they have erased all that even before independence i'm telling you right there were provinces there were princely states princely states means there was a prince okay there was a diwan there was a nizam or something like that okay so you think if the king does something wrong you think he'll be brought to he'll be punished no right it, it was all caste based and uh, early manu smriti and all that they used okay but now even if the prime minister does something wrong he has to come to the same court same court that you and i should go if we do a, if if we do a mistake okay it can be the prime minister of india or it can be a movie star okay you take salman khan that black buck case he had to go to the same a uh, small court okay they alone directly can go to the supreme court or uh, high court okay whatever court is uh, a normal person should go for that case even the people of the highest uh, echelon should go to the same place okay that is equality before law everybody will be treated equally okay but in the equality lay there is a small uh, there is another uh, doctrine okay c e b l okay equality before law so there is also another thing called e p l equal protection of law okay so now uh, you all you all uh, would have attended counseling right you all attended counseling right before coming to college yes ma'am yes so uh, didn't you have uh, caste based reservations you had right yes ma'am we had caste based reservations you had it in college and then when you go for work you go for civil services or any other service in co in government sector employment anything you will have that caste based reservation don't you think it's against equality is yes, it uh, is. theoretically isn't it against equality just before sometime yes, the law is giving you equal uh, equality before law and then next line itself they are telling uh, no no we will give reservations and all that so they started giving these reservations and then there were a lot of cases coming up okay uh and that's when the government told there's another thing called equal protection of law okay that is when people were not in a level playing field okay now uh, the lower caste were not in a level playing field with the higher caste right the higher caste were already they have been educated for hundreds and thousands of hundreds of years they are they were always so education becomes gets easier they read it reaches them is much easier financially they are much better but think of someone in a lower uh, at a lower strata in the society okay they are not in a level playing field so you have to give them something you have to raise them so that it com- they all come to the same level playing field and then they can compete right this is called equity okay so they are trying to give that here okay so this uh, due to this equal protection of law doctrine all these reservations and all become applicable and it is not against the law okay so this is basically right to equality in that you have so many other provisions but i'm not going into the details so next on the right to freedom a very important uh, freedom okay so what all protests are happening around that you know of famous protests that happened uh, in our country in our state jallikattu jallikattu protest very good what else hydrocarbon hydrocarbon protest very good mm. yes sterilite protest sterilite protest very good and then there are farmer protest happening every time everywhere in india okay so there are so many protest happening there was once uh, an incident in china where uh, a group of people there i think uyghur muslims okay they protested against the government and the government just ran over people they just ran over people killing people okay so that is uh, so china is a totalitarian regime okay it is not a democratic country do you think something like that can be done in india can you just run over people and tell them you can't protest and uh, you just have to abide by whatever the government says do you think but, the government can do that the government shoots people no ma'am government the government shoots people police have uh, government shoots shot. people yeah so see 
practically there are a lot of difficulties okay so in every protest there will be uh, okay the constitution gives you the right to protest the constitution itself gives you the right to express express yourself by words by media or like by words by writings okay any way you can express yourself you can protest okay that is uh, right to protest in kudukla it will be right to assemble okay you can assemble as a group without arms without arms peacefully you can protest okay but when things get violent it becomes a law and order problem so that is when the police have to come in and then to control the protest they have to take action so practically that's when okay something will happen and also uh, you know how do i say this how do i put it understand like this the shooting all that happening they will have a story where you know people are protesting and they're trying to burn the police station it's becoming huge police a uh, huge law and order issue so they have to use force to control it okay um so that way they have to do it but otherwise if it's a peaceful protest police should just give protection okay you have the constitutional right to assemble okay and uh, to speech and expression you can nobody can restrict that okay so adikile you have not right to movement of uh, can somebody tell you no you can't go to this uh, state can somebody restrict you you are coming from tamil nadu so you cannot come to andhra or you can't go to delhi tamilian you just stay here no they can't say that so because you have the right to move freedom of movement you can travel around india nobody is going to stop you and there is no visa it's one country right so that is right to freedom of speech and expression uh, and then so now in questions jairaj and phoenix okay so what right uh, of them has been abrogated a very important or the most important constitutional right, right? right? express their views okay they so were not allowed to express they were not allowed to express okay but in this there is a more and there is another more important right okay right to life and personal liberty okay the right to live the right to life okay that is the most important fundamental right that was taken away from them right yes ma'am so that itself was taken away from them so now what are what are everybody protesting you're all signing petitions or like putting status and you're discussing with your with your peers and family okay what are we saying what are we saying there has been an injustice and the police officers responsible for this should be punished and uh, justice could be served okay so who are you approaching who are you approaching you are approaching the court correct court law yeah you are approaching law okay so everything has to do with the constitution okay now you are an advocate you don't how will you go and like what will be your uh, document like what will be your case article 21 like their right to life has been taken away from them okay so give justice ipo vand the ipc crpc all that it's just procedure so what crime what punishment that only is given in that okay but then what is your right your right is being taken away so that to get it back or to get justice you go to the court okay and who is giving you all that it's all coming from the constitution of india and who gave the constitution the power people the people of india have empowered the constitution okay it's like circular you don't know where it's starting from and where it's ending okay the people have given constitution the power and the constitution is giving people all their rights okay yeah any doubts no ma'am okay so when you know your rights you can have a better bargain okay have you all watched otta uh, sirappu movie anybody Yes, ma'am. What does it refer? At the level, party, but what will he do? He will. Uh, he would have already written a letter. Okay, so the story is that a man is being uh, accused. He is accused. Okay, not con. So the, there's a difference. Okay, accused. Now you are being accused of a crime. Okay, only when you go to a court and the judge finds you guilty, then you become a convict. Okay, so this Jairaj and Phoenix were accused. Okay. and uh, so that is when they were taken to the police station and uh, all the brutality happened okay so now um, so whatever happened has happened okay the thing is the police intimidated them too much okay 
but then uh, you have the human rights commission and then you have so many police officers above that above them okay in that in that movie in that movie called otte serupu uh, partiban is an accused okay accused for um, killing like few people killing many people okay so when he goes there he is uh, he is not accepting to the crimes he is telling i didn't do it obviously okay and then um, okay even if he did do you think he has to accept to that even if i did the crime do you think i have to accept or you know is there no protection against that okay you actually have a safeguard okay right to silence mostly you will see this in english movies or english series whenever you are arrested the police officer will uh, come and tell you you have the right to remain silent okay you can wait for your advocate to come or this people just don't talk have you watched it in uh, english movies you don't necessarily have to talk yes you have the right to remain silent okay that is there in india also but what did these people they do they took jairaj and phoenix at to the police station and then they bet him saying that it was interrogation there is no interrogation needed that time it is not needed okay fundamental rights you have fundamental rights against self incrimination you do not have to give a, a statement against yourself you don't have to accept okay i only did this i only did this or i killed this person abinu vandha neenga solla thevilla there is fundamental rights article uh, okay in those fundamental rights you have few articles and adile vandhi this is one important okay so next time something happens to someone for that matter you can tell them you can remain silent it is a fundamental right so if the police is intimidating you you talk to them you talk law theriyama law pesa thikku therinj pesunga okay so then you can intimidate them or you don't see it's not your idea to intimidate them but then you can save yourselves that is important for yourselves right that is very important that you save yourself okay so you have right against self incrimination and then even if someone if if, if you are being arrested okay if you are being arrested within 24 hours you should be taken to a judicial magistrate you should be taken to a court okay or conviction onu kudutta appuram na you can you will be go to, going to jail and all that otherwise and then you have the right to remain silent the right to have and have a representation that is right to have an advocate okay you might think now it is all now since you are in third year of college you might think it's all too far fetched and where am i going to use all this okay but i'm telling you whatever you study in college that also you might or might not use it in your life but then all these basic skills somewhere in the future it will be useful it will come handy okay even if it's not happening to you you can tell a friend who's in trouble okay know your rights talk to the people in authority talk you know strongly talk whatever your rights are you have to talk to them so that you don't um, get harassed okay so uh, yeah fundamental rights apo you have right to what did we started with right to equality okay right to equality is that uh, from the lowest person to the highest office holding person everybody are below the law everybody have to use the same law codes and everything okay everybody is equal before the law and then right to freedom in right to freedom you have the right to and then the press rights ellame vandu right to freedom of speech and expression fully implicit a vandru okay so right to freedom of speech expression movement association assembly okay all this comes under right to freedom of uh, speech and right to freedom of speech and then you have right to uh, pers- life and personal liberty okay in that adla when you have so many implied rights so many okay so they always say that our constitution is organic okay when do you call something organic when it is a living a living thing right when it's something living you call it organic so every time a new case comes up our judges or like our okay they keep adding something to the constitution they keep um, how do i say what is the right word they keep interpreting interpreting the law okay so the heading is just right to life and personal liberty but with every new case it's come to add a uh, right to clean environment okay right to um, uh right to education has been added to it right to a dignified life okay right against uh, uh delayed execution okay so example there's a convict or there's someone in jail waiting to be hanged he's going to be hanged he or she okay 
so you can't delay the execution you say one day and then you keep postponing it that also is against his uh, right to life and personal liberty because that trauma is even more uh, even worse they say okay so they have kept interpreting it again over and over and over again and there are so many rights under that okay and then you have a uh, right to religion freedom of religion oh sorry right against exploitation okay child labor sex uh, trafficking okay there was a system all this has been um abolished and uh, they are against the rights against our uh, constitutional freedom okay we have the freedom and we cannot be subject to all that okay then you have right to freedom can anybody like forcefully convert you you can be a hindu muslim sikh parsi like any religion can anybody forcefully convert you do you think it's okay it is not right everybody listening yes ma'am okay so is our forcible conversions right no ma'am no it is not right and if somewhere it's happening do you have uh, a way to get justice can do you have a way to punish those people and uh, get or do you just have to silently accept that we have to get justice we have to get justice okay so how do you seek it because it is a right okay you cannot you have the freedom okay constitutional rights la fundamental rights la you have to right to right to freedom of religion you have okay so under that you have the right to profess that is practice religion conscience okay practice propagate religion ellathukume you have rights adikkela you have lots of other rights also okay and then cultural and educational rights that is for uh, minorities okay you have linguistic minorities and then you have religious minorities right linguistic minorities ellame state wise whoever is minority okay they can have their own uh, schools they can administer their uh, you know affairs and then they can protect they can take steps to protect their script right and then you have right to constitutional remedies constitutional remedies means when your rights when your that to your when your fundamental rights are being abrogated you can go to the supreme court okay the supreme court will take care of it okay these are your fundamental rights and uh, they are very very important that you know them okay so um, after fundamental rights okay it's 321 okay so after fundamental rights you have fundamental you have dpsp directive principles of state policy which are ideals set by the government to run the state and then you have some fundamental duties and then you have the framework okay you have the central government okay so what is the framework somebody tell or text so the structure that's around us is anybody please reply please repeat the question so uh, now you um, you have some structural elements okay like the executives the legislature and the judiciary okay so for the legislature what is the structure that you have parliament legislatures so you have the parliament okay so in the parliament who is the head so okay what is the, in parliament what are the constituents means you have the yeah you have the lok sabha rajya sabha and the president is also a part of the parliament because all the bills should finally be signed by him assent it should receive president's assent only then it becomes a law okay so that is a central government and again you have state government in state government you have a uh, state legislative assembly and then you have the uh, legislative council some states do not have council okay then again you have the chief minister and everywhere you have the governor you have the president okay and for the judiciary executives executives when you have the ministers council of ministers okay the same mps mps or mlas are belonging to the ruling party some important people they receive good portfolios they become ministers okay so ministers and uh, legislature and executive is actually overlapping okay it is like uh, in the venn diagram you have this overlapping intersection part right so they belong to that category okay and then now what do you have you have to judiciary in judiciary we all know you have the supreme court and high court 
but below that you have a lot of you have the district court and then you have even sub court all smaller courts you have okay that is where it all starts from there only you should go to the higher levels okay and then you have some commissions some constitutional um, commissions okay like the election commission upsc union public service commission tnpsc state public service and uh, okay so uh, all this is given to us by the constitution of india and uh, another thing is that okay official language coming to languages there was always this comes up okay when uh, they say hindi is being imposed in the states and tamil nadu is always fighting against it okay is hindi a national language reply yes or no or speak up no, no. hindi is not a no, national uh, hindi is not a national language so do we have a national language no we don't have a national language very good so this clarity is very important because i have seen news channels report okay hindi is the national language and why are tamilians so tamil people so against it okay uh, so you just have to get your facts right okay uh, india has 22 scheduled languages see i told in the beginning that there are 12 schedules okay so in one of the schedule there are 22 languages mentioned so or uh, 22 languages belong to most of the states okay so we have 22 scheduled languages and we have two official languages official languages means for official communication whatever we use okay so we use english and hindi matlab kya hai india does not have a national language okay so even this is given in the constitution of india so constitution of india those twenty two languages okay and uh, so yeah this is the brief about the constitution okay in detail you can you have so much to study and constitution is very interesting okay it is it is everywhere around you okay you cannot think that you know where will it be useful for me abdilla it is around you and you are enjoying the rights given by it okay so please attend the class seriously okay and uh, try to study the constitution learn like you know try to get whatever you can get out of it and also study some other laws which you think might be useful okay have a rough idea okay so that way you can help people okay there is domestic violence happening child sexual abuse so for all that you have a mechanism to get justice for the people who are being affected okay only when you know it you can use it right so please know know your rights know your laws and uh, know about rti right to information act okay they can you can have a session on how to file an rti and all that that will be really useful for you guys okay uh we can wind up this session uh, any doubts any doubts anybody okay so please know your rights and uh, yeah be aware of all the things that's happening around you okay you will have you know your perception on life itself is, will change once you start looking around and seeing what everything that's happening okay so if there are no doubts we can wind up thank you thank you everybody yeah, yeah hello geeta this is ruby hi ma'am <laughs> thank you so it was a wonderful inter uh, interactive talk uh so thank you it was nice that you accepted it at a short notice and uh, i think you were the app here for this uh, topic also okay, and uh, i hope uh, arun sir also introduced her so she is just waiting for the joining date for uh, the dsp post so once she uh, joins then we might not get her appointment right geeta yes, ma'am <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah it was uh, good and it uh, it was nice that you pointed out it's important to know about the constitution and fundamental rights not for just one's own sake but also it might be helpful for uh, our own closer circle at any time and uh, it was a great achievement geeta that you made students interact <laughs> they had to <laughs> thank you uh, thank you students also for interacting uh, yeah thank you so much geeta thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you everybody bye bye thank you thank you Thank you, Mangalika.